Hello, and welcome to another installment of Noobstone, where we take a simplified look at different redstone components so we can better understand how to use them in different redstone contraptions. Today we're going to be taking a look at the AND gate. AND gates are used in a lot of different logic circuits, so it's important to understand them so we can know how to put them to use. So let's get started, and I'll show you exactly how they work. Now a basic AND gate consists of two inputs, input A and input B, and a single output. The inputs can consist of any sort of power source, as simple as a button or a lever, or a more involved circuitry, just so long as the input for A and input for B are separate from each other. To help us visualize how an AND gate works, let's take a look at this simple table. As you can see, the only time the output is on is when both the input A and input B are both on. If either one of them is off, the output is also off. So let's take a look at how to build a simple AND circuit. Now there are three basic ways in which you can build an AND circuit. One that uses physical components like a sticky piston, one that uses a comparator, and one that uses simple redstone torches. Let's take a look at the one that uses sticky pistons first. First thing you need to do to build this circuit is to start with a repeater pointing into your output and then come to this side and place a sticky piston pointing in this direction with a solid block and then place some redstone dust off of input A and input B and you now have a basic AND circuit. The way this works is that when this lever is on it will power this redstone dust but the circuit does not reach the output because there is nothing to connect this redstone dust to this repeater. In order to complete the circuit we need to then power this lever on input B which activates our piston and pushes this block into place, completing the circuit from input A. As you can see this will only complete the circuit if both input A and input B are on. If either one of them is off the circuit does not complete and our output is off. But if both of them are on, the output is on, which matches the conditions of a basic AND circuit. Now the second way we can construct an AND gate is using the comparator. The way this one works is you place the comparator pointing into the output and then run some redstone dust from input A and then come to this side and place some redstone dust, a solid block, a redstone torch, and then some redstone dust going to the side of this comparator. The way in which comparators work is that they have an, a main input, a side input, and an output. The output only has a signal if the main input has a signal strength greater than or equal to the side input. Using this principle we can make an AND gate from this by having two redstone dust coming from this input and a single redstone dust coming from a powered torch which can then be toggled on and off using the second input. Let's demonstrate how that works. When this lever is powered you can see that the signal strength of the redstone dust coming out goes from 15 to 14 which is less than the signal strength of the redstone dust here which goes from 15. 15 is greater than 14 therefore there is no output from the comparator. However, when this lever is powered, it powers this block, which toggles this redstone torch, which turns it off, therefore the side input has a signal strength of zero, and the output of the comparator is then turned on. You can see that this matches the conditions of an AND gate from our table as well, as if either one of these inputs is turned off, the output is off. The only way in which it is turned on is if both input A and input B are on. Now a third version of the AND gate can be built using just redstone dust and redstone torches. And while it is considerably simpler to put together than the other two versions, they do have their place in circumstances where they would be preferred. However, in most cases, this third version of the AND gate is the one you'll run into the most often. Now the simplified version of the AND gate is possible because it's built off of an existing simple 
logic circuit, the NOR gate. For that reason, it takes a deeper understanding of logic tables in order to understand how this one works. So let's take a look and compare the logic table of the AND gate to that of the NOR gate. Now as we take a look at these two tables, we can see that they are very similar, as they both have one condition where the output signal is on and three conditions where the output signal is off. Of course, the difference being that with the AND gate, the output signal is only on when both input A and input B are both on. Whereas with the NOR gate, the output is on only when input A and input B are both off. Another way of looking at this would be that if we could invert the inputs for A and B on our NOR gate, the resulting output would match that of the AND gate. Let's go ahead and build that so you can see what I mean. So the first thing we want to do is start with building the simple NOR gate. If you watched our video on how to build OR gates and NOR gates, you know this is a very simple thing to build. All you have to do is take a redstone dust from both input A and input B, then come and place a block here and connect the redstone dust across the top of it, and then place a redstone torch off that solid block. This is our basic NOR gate. Now as we said, in order to convert this into an AND gate, all we need to do is invert the signal for both input A and input B, and we accomplish this by removing the redstone dust behind each input and replacing them with redstone torches. And this is our basic AND gate. As you can see, if we turn on input A, the output is still off. If we turn on output B, the output is still off. It only turns on when you have both A and B powered. Now to see how that works, as you can tell, coming around to the other side, whenever the inputs are powered, it toggles these redstone torches off, which unpowers this redstone signal, which means this block is not powered, which then means this redstone torch is in its native state of being on. So, when both of them are powered, the output is on. However, if one of them is not powered on the input, the redstone to torch off the back of it then is toggled on, which powers this redstone dust, which then powers this block, and then toggles this output torch off, making the output off. And in this way, if either of them are off, the output is off, but if both of them are on, the output is on exactly the results we want from an AND gate. Now if you want to have more than two inputs on your AND gate, it is definitely possible on all three versions. However, versions 1 and 2 are a little more complicated as you would have to daisy chain a series of the different components. But on the third version, it's very easy. All you have to do is add each additional input and connect them using redstone dust off the back of the redstone torch. Just so long as you have it within range of the output. And those are our three basic AND gates. Of course there are various different ways in order to configure these, but these are the essential ideas behind them. And if you understand the principles, you can basically build them in any format you need. Now in addition to the AND gate, we want to take a look at the NAND gate as well. Now a NAND gate is the same thing as an AND gate, except with a NOT gate on the output. Or another way of thinking of it is the AND gate with the output inverted. Let's go ahead and take a look at this simple logic table so we can better visualize what we mean. As you can see, the only time the output is off is when both inputs are on. As long as at least one or both of the inputs is off, the outputs are on. So let's go ahead and build that so we can see it in action. First thing we're going to do is come in and start with our AND gate, which we built just a little while ago. So let's go ahead and put in a solid block here, and then place a redstone torch off the back of both input A and B, and on the output off of this block here then link them up with redstone dust from input A and B. As you can see, this is our basic AND gate. Now the only thing is to make it an AND gate, we want to put a NOT gate on the output. But the output is essentially already a NOT gate. And when you add a NOT gate to another NOT gate, basically all you do is remove that redstone torch. Let me demonstrate what I mean. 
If you take a look at this circuit with a NOT gate, basically a NOT gate is one where when the input is on, the output is off. When the input is off, the output is on. If you were to add a NOT gate onto the end of that, it inverts the signal back to its original state. When the input is off, the output is off, and when the input is on, the output is on, which is literally the exact same thing as just running a line of redstone dust from the input to the output. So a NOT gate that is knotted is basically just a piece of redstone dust. So all we have to do is remove that torch, this block here, and replace it with redstone dust. In which case, now the only time this output will be off is if both inputs are on. If either of them is off, or if both of them is off, the output is on, which matches the logic requirements for a NAND gate. And those are our basic AND and NAND gates. But let's take a look at an example of how we can put these to use. Now to demonstrate the use of an AND gate, we're again in our lovely little home. But this time what we want to do is to be able to open this door with the use of this button. However, we also have a master override switch that it, this button will only work when this switch is in the unlock position. So as we can have that turned on and press the button, the door opens. Let's go through and we can take a look at how this is wired to work. As you can see around the back side where the switch is, is a torch, and where the button is, there's also a torch, and they're connected using redstone dust to this block here with a redstone torch underneath it. When both the switch and the button are activated, their torches will be deactivated, which means that the redstone dust will not be powered, therefore the block will not be powered, and the redstone torch will be toggled back on, which in turn opens the door. And that's a simple example of how to use an AND gate. There's lots of different ways you can use it, so I look forward to hearing how you put AND gates to work in your world. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that it helps you out and that you can put it to use somewhere in your world. And if it has, I'd greatly appreciate it if you just let us know down in the comments how you used it. But on that note, I'd like to say thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next one. But until then, this is Texas PK. Be good to each other. Bye!